Hi, everybody, and happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to my dad. Um, someone asked me, a friend asked me, a very supportive friend on Facebook, asked me if I would explain the difference between ethnophobia and racism. Well, first of all, ethnophobia, as far as I can tell, must be a word out there that was coined by someone else, but I've never seen it anywhere except in my own statements and essays. And the movement I'm trying to encourage is one in which people stop using the word race or racism and use ethnophobia instead. Because racism is, the word race and the word racism and all the words that come from those words are wrong. They're incorrect and they're dangerous because they cause the problem. Let me explain why. First of all, it's necessary to know that genome mapping has proved that all of we humans on the earth at this time are the same race. More correctly, we're the same species. The word race was coined during the Victorian era to justify the enslavement of people of color. The notion was that they were a different species. And to codify species and culture under one heading, the name race was born. Most scientists today do not agree with using the word race, but it is still used culturally among people who don't understand how dangerous it is. If there were different races or species among humans at this time, then everyone who isn't African-American and of a pure gene pool that was created at the dawn of modern man would be a subspecies. Do you want to be a subspecies? Now, of course, science is not about what we want. It's what about, it, it is what is about what is. But we are not a subspecies. Blacks are not a subspecies. Asians are not a subspecies. Whites are not a subspecies. There is only one species on the planet in this epoch, in this geologic time frame. And that is Homo sapiens sapiens. The only time there were two species of human, as far as we know now, is when there were Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon together. We branched out from the Cro-Magnon. The Neanderthal either were killed off by disease and or by violence. They no longer exist. So, to call another group of people or yourself another race is to label them a subspecies. You don't have the right to do that, and that's bad manners. It's also incorrect. So, it doesn't make sense to call this problem where one group of people, an, art, an artificial group, by the way, because there is no one pure group of people at all anywhere. It's, it's dangerous to call one group of people another race. Besides from the fact that it's incorrect, it's insulting because you're saying that they are a subspecies. So racism itself is quote-unquote racist. Racism itself is ethnophobic because by using the word racist, you're suggesting that it's true that there are different races. It's no more true that there are different races of humans then it is true that there are Martians on Mars. So, for example, it would be inane, ridiculous, some form of comedy to say, I'm anti-Martian, unless you were on a science fiction show, because there are no Martians. Likewise, it's ridiculous to say he's racist, because there aren't any other races. Now, of course, the fear of what I'm saying is that we will minimize the problems of ethnophobia, or for the duration of this discussion, racism, which I'm saying shouldn't even be printed or spoken anymore, like the N-word. The word ethnophobia, ethnophobic, should be used because, as I said before, there is no pure group of people. There are no pure, quote-unquote, black people. There are no pure, quote-unquote, white people. The DNA of all of us, as has been proven by DNA studies, has the DNA of almost every other group. 
We all have markers in us, not only of other human groups, but of all other animal and plant groups. There is only one tree of life on this planet. Evolutionary theory is correct. It's proven in our DNA. And it's wrong and harmful to call other group of people different races. Now, why is it harmful? Because it allows ignorant people to believe that racism is real. It allows them to align themselves with one race or another. It allows them to decide if they want to, that it's okay to like people who have dark skin or people who have angled eyes or an epicanthal fold or people who have attached earlobes or people who are predisposed to being tall or blonde or blue-eyed. These are only expressions of genes in local groups of people. And they only express themselves in a predominance because people decide to interbreed in their group. Am I starting to make sense? The only differences we have are ethnophobic ones or ethnic ones. The only differences that really matter. You know, it it doesn't matter if my neighbor has dark skin and black hair, or high cheekbones. It doesn't really have any effect on his behavior unless he believes he's a different species. You see? The real differences between people are ethnic, meaning cultural. And yes, the people who tend to be in one culture may tend to be orbiting one particular look, and then a variation of that look, and a variation on the variation, and a variation on the variation on the variation. But... Silly people will categorize them according to the way they look. The way you need to categorize people, if you have to, is based on how they behave, how they play music, how they may tend to wear clothing, their political, religious, philosophical, civic views. These are the only differences between us. Our biological differences really have no marked effect on how we behave, unless, of course, We are taking pygmy people and putting them in the Olympics against very tall people. You see, in day-to-day ethics and behavior, your DNA doesn't really have an effect. And that's why it makes no sense to group people by how they look. Now, if there's one group of people which is predisposed to having less acute hearing, or there's another group which tends to be taller, still those groups are not pure. So, what I'm suggesting is that people stop giving credence to ethnophobes, and from here on in, I'm not going to use the R word, because it suggests that different species of human exist. If you'd like to help stop this, you have to stop using the wrong words. We have ethnic differences, or cultural differences, and consequently, if you start discussing cultural and ethnic groups, we'll actually be able to start talking about the problems that we have, okay? So Southerners who talk like this and don't like black people, they don't like them because of some of their cultural practices. But you have to have the courage to stand up and say, I don't like how you worship, or I don't like how you live, or I don't like how you raise your children. And you'd be in the forefront of compassion if you didn't label the whole group and you talk to people as individuals. But I myself, when I lived in Korea... I made an aggregate judgment that most of the people living there tended to behave in a certain way because that was their culture. It's useful sometimes to say, we people in the Northeast have this tendency and it's having this effect. Okay? It's being big. But if you label a group, especially if you label them by DNA, first of all, you're wrong. And second of all, you could be causing a problem. Could be. Depends on how careful you are with your words. Does that make sense? If anybody needs further clarification, let me know.